My channel is based around modding. Most of you guys know that. I post a lot of Fallout 4 and Skyrim mod videos. Predominantly Fallout 4, but you know, every once in a while I do branch out into other things. Well, that's going to kind of be the purpose of this video. I've been covering mods for many years. Before Fallout and Skyrim, it was like Minecraft, and even before then, it was a bunch of other games. So with that in mind, I want to go back to my roots and actually just look at what have been the best mods to be released over the past year. This is going to be for any game. Obviously, there's going to be some Fallout and Skyrim in this video because they are two huge hugely modded games with some of the best mods being released, but also a bunch of other ones. And also before we get into the video, I wanted to shout out again the Nuka design that I showed you guys yesterday. A lot of you guys did jump on that, so we're only going to have this available for four more days, so get it now before it goes away forever. Also one other quick disclaimer, this video is in no particular order. The last one you see isn't the best in my opinion, I just kind of think all of these have been some of the best new mod releases to come out in this past year. Starting things off, we have one that I imagine a lot of you guys are going to be familiar with, and that's Beyond Skyrim Bruma. The guys over at Beyond Skyrim are aiming to add in a ton of the other provinces and regions in the Elder Scrolls lore and just kind of world. The major release we got this year was Bruma. This is going to be an area adjacent to Skyrim. You guys may have experienced this in the Elder Scrolls Online, but probably not. Where you most likely remember this from is the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. So this is a really cool mod. It's adding in this entire new region back into Skyrim. You're basically going to have a little gate that you walk through, and then you are in that region. There's going to be main quests, side quests, new NPCs to experience, and everything you kind of want from these big overhauls. We've had a few of these for Skyrim, a few for Fallout and Fallout New Vegas. One of the really cool aspects about this particular mod is that it actually takes place at the same time as Skyrim. It's a recreation of the lands, and a lot of the NPCs are the same from Oblivion, but it's in the future compared to the Oblivion version. So all the current events going on as you do play through Skyrim are applicable to Bruma now also. And due to that, you have all these brand new quests and experiences, but you do kind of remember everything because you probably have seen this before as you played it before. And if all that wasn't enough, this is also fully available for Xbox One in its entirety. That's a massive step forward for modding, from the kind of gray area where many game companies didn't even approve modding to now actually having full support for it on consoles is just crazy. I really do hope other game companies are looking at what Bethesda is doing with Skyrim Special Edition as well as Fallout 4 and starting to add it into their future console releases. So we do have a world of ice and fire. What this is going to be is basically a Game of Thrones overhaul for Mountain Blade Warband. Mountain Blade Warband has a ton of mods installed as modules. You have Persino, a Clash of Kings, and now of course a world of ice and fire. Right off the bat, if you've watched the Game of Thrones TV show or read the book series A Song of Ice and Fire, you're going to love this mod for Mountain Blade. I imagine some of you have never heard of Mountain Blade. Basically, it's an open world game where you could travel around, kill people, take castles. And I feel like this is one of the most pure Game of Thrones experiences you could actually get in a video game right now. This mod is adding in all of the major factions and even a lot of the major events that occur in the TV show and in the books. And even beyond that, this mod actually allows you to experience some of those epic and large scale battles. Seeing a massive fight break out between the two factions you've read so much about, or even some of the lords and kings that you've actually read about or even seen on TV and actually getting to fight side by side by them is pretty crazy. The scale of this mod and honestly the possibilities it brings to the table are breathtaking. Whether you're a fan of Game of Thrones, which I imagine this appeals to a lot of those people, but even beyond that, just as a mod for Mountain Blade Warband, this really brings a lot to the table and it's one of the best options out there right now. Then we do have Long War 2. This is going to be a mod for XCOM 2. I talked a little bit earlier about how modding was often in the gray scene of video games. Sometimes developers supported it, sometimes they kind of condemned it, but that didn't necessarily kill the scene overall. Long War 2 really shows how proactive certain developers have become towards modding. Long War was a mod for the original XCOM, adding in a ton of cool new things, very similar to the way Long War 2 works for XCOM 2, but Long War 2 was actually commissioned by Firaxis to be made. So yeah, it's a mod you could download on Nexus Mods or the Steam Workshop, but at the same time, it's on a whole nother quality level because they had a team being paid to create this. The mod itself is awesome. It's basically an expansion pack for XCOM 2. It makes the campaign much longer. It adds in a ton of new factions that have new mechanics and abilities. It's not just like a retexture or different experience in XCOM. It's really changing the formula at least slightly and adding in a ton of new mechanics that definitely make the game a lot more interesting. If you already played through XCOM 2 and you're like, ah, I don't really know if I want this, get it. It definitely does refresh it enough to make it worthy of a new playthrough, even if you're already again play through the old games plus at the end of the day despite this being of production level quality it is totally free so we have the mod I probably know the most about, and that's going to be Sim Settlements for Fallout 4. This is a pretty crazy mod. It's basically bringing the idea that some of the Sim City games had and incorporating it into Fallout 4's new settlement mode. This mod is honestly massive. The mod itself does have a ton of new features, but even beyond that, it actually has its own expansion pack, and another one is on the way. We just got a trailer for that a few days ago. Not many people think Fallout 4 is the best game in the series, and a lot of people don't even think it's a good game. A source of a number of those critiques is actually with the settlement mode. Sim Settlements 
balance really polishes the game, making it so if you don't want to dump a ton of hours into the settlement system, you could still have a ton of fun with it. Placing down a few plots of land and watching as a city builds up and new settlers arrive is crazy. Playing this mod and building up little towns, it really looks like you are creating settlements in Fallout 4 without a ton of work on your side. Even beyond that, it has a ton of cool mechanics, tech trees, different requirements for upgrading buildings, interactions, and new features that you can unlock through building up your settlements. It improves any normal Fallout 4 playthrough in a pretty traditional way, but even beyond that, it actually gives you a whole new thing to focus on in the game. You can very easily dump a ton of time and hours into building up your little settlements around the Commonwealth. And even beyond all that, this mod has mods. There are a ton of mods adding in new buildings and new features into this. And again, just based on the update cycle, how often we're getting new features and these new expansion packs coming out, it really is a great download. If you haven't played Fallout 4 through a while, I would re-download it just to play with this mod. If you're already playing Fallout 4, you should have this installed. So last but not least, to make things even more complicated, we have a mod of a mod of a mod. Yeah, that's actually literally true. There's going to be a mod for Stalker Call of Pripyat. The way this works is, in one of the previous Stalker games, a mod was released named Misery. It brought certain overhauls to the game and honestly just improved it overall. Well, then as a newer Stalker game, Call of Pripyat did come out, people wanted that same mod and those same improvements ported over. So it was released as Call of Misery, hence the name Call of Pripyat. But then even beyond that, as this was ported over and there was a newer game and more features were requested, an even further mod called Call of Misery Last Day, or just Last Day, building off the old mod Call of Misery, which built off the original mod Misery. So now we do have Last Day. What this is, is going to be a massive overhaul to Stalker Call of Appropriate. So what we have now is really a combination of a bunch of things. They're adding in new things with Last Day, creating their own features, overhauling the game, but even beyond that, it actually is its own mod pack, adding in a ton of other features from existing mods, a lot of these from Russia. There's a big modding scene over there, and a lot of those mods were never converted to English until this point, so a lot of Western users never got to experience these. Some of the things are like dangerous NPCs, inventory changes, a sidearm, an ammo belt, and even outside of just like the normal gameplay features, there are visual overhauls being made here. Overhauls to some of the different little areas you do experience within the game, as well as taking advantage of things like sweet effects, which is used in other games like Fallout and Skyrim. This is a proper full game overhaul, and honestly one of the biggest game overhauls in this mod. After installing this, you're going to experience a different game than you did previously. And yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. As always, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you are going to download and play some of these mods with their games. And if you feel like there's a big mod I didn't see or I overlooked, let me know in the comments down below. I tried to find some for like Minecraft and other games that I know have big modding scenes, but it's really hard to see, hey, what was the biggest new release for this year when you're not consistently following a modding scene. As always, again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you all next time. Later.